it is still, God is still exploring who it is and what it's capable of and all the infinite multitudinous ways in which it can express itself and know itself and hallucinate about itself and dream about itself. That's what life is an infinite dream of the Creator expressing and knowing itself, of God expressing and knowing itself. So even God doesn't know who it is quite yet, what it is capable of. God is still a mystery to itself, and it will always be that way because it is infinite. It has no beginning and no ending. Because it is infinite, even God cannot ever complete its self-knowing. That's why creation after creation reemerges, Even after the dissolution of the entire universe, there shall be a rebirth, a reincarnation of the entire grand illusion of this multiverse. Because the Creator is ever curious, and infinity ever wants to know itself and express itself. And here you are, an extension of that, a manifestation of that, the outcome of the Creator's curiosity. And here you are thinking with your physical human conditioned mind that you know what's best for you and what isn't, that you know who you are and who you aren't, that you know what's right and what's wrong, that you know what God is. <laughs> Sorry. With our minds, we think we know what God is. Coming from God into this self-judgmental little world of the veiled human state, and then we think we have a concept of what it is. We got to surrender to the mystery at some point, my friends. It cannot be known. If not even God knows the full extent of its infinite nature, then how can we assume that we do with our conditioned 30, 40, 50, 60 year old little physical brain. At some point, you've got to admit defeat to God. And this is when you come back home. And this is when you realize yourself as one with God, as one with that mystery. This is liberation. And this is when love will be automatic. This is when you will know that at the deepest part of yourself, you are invincible. You are invincibly free. And therefore, love is automatic. When you're free, love is automatic. If you're contained, if you are in a self-made prison of ideas and illusion and arrogance and pride, you cannot love. You can pretend to be nice. That's the best you can do. But you cannot love. Only God loves. No human has ever loved. Humans have opened themselves up to God's love to a lesser or greater extent. But no human has ever loved and never will. Only God loves. The human can only prefer, which is not a problem. I'm not judging it. It's just the mechanics of it. A human cannot love. You cannot do love. Because if it appears suddenly, if it's here today and it wasn't here yesterday, how could it be love? So if you're creating love today, it's a good attempt. But just understand the mechanics of it, nothing wrong with it, but the mechanics of it is what you're doing is you're opening your aperture to the love that was already there, but it was obscured from you by your own arrogance, by your own mindless thinking. And in the pause of mind, there is the I am that I am that remains, that is indestructible. When you stop thinking, you still exist. In fact, you know the fact that you exist that much clearer. This is the beginning of getting to know God directly through the power of mind, through the power of consciousness. And to then surrender to that, to relax into that, allows the aperture to open to this automatic love. But only God loves. We can either align to that, be open to that, be receptive of that, let it come through us, or we can be closed off to it by thinking that we know. And this is the real power behind the statement, thy will is my will. Because when we have this little programmed will that thinks it needs this or wants this or knows this, then my will is separate from thy will. And it creates this barrier. It closes the aperture. And then we suffer. So as much as we like to know that we're righteous and that we know and hold on to that little flame of light, it's really detrimental to ourselves to be arrogant and prideful and to think that we know. The mystery is much more beneficial to us as a being. It feels much better to surrender to the mystery and to recognize the fact that we exist and to merge with that. I hope this didn't go over too many heads. If it does, again, allow just a transmission to flow forth, allow it to relax something in you, perhaps, some ancient conditioning, and just let it work its magic. You don't have to fully understand everything I said. And feel free to, of course, review this, rewatch this, and treat it like a guided meditation almost, which it kind of was. Now for some more practical tools, some more 
here he, me as a human being, what can I do to enhance my access to this liberating love? And one thing is forgiveness of self, but also forgiveness of other. So I'm sure that most of you have some kind of a story, some kind of a memory, something that you don't feel completely harmonious with, someone that did something or didn't do something that you feel when you think about it, it's like, eh, there's just a little contraction, there's a little pain, there's a little betrayal, there's a little abandonment, there's a little uh, conflict of some kind, right? Any opportunity like that is an opportunity. Any, any experience like that is a great opportunity to practice surrendering to God. Practice opening your aperture to God's love. Because if you as a person, again, the bubble that thinks it knows something, <laughs> One way to pop that bubble is to give of yourself to something else, to forgive, to give for, to forgive, to release. So if you have the courage to just for a moment, and I'm not a big fan of bypassing your emotions, and you have the right to feel how you feel, you have the right to feel betrayed, and you have the right to communicate that and all that. So that's all valid. It really is, and it can be very powerful. But for this particular exercise, what if, what if you could just forgive all of that? Forgive the debt that other people owe you in all ways, physically, fi financially, relationally, emotionally, romantically, whatever it is. Can you forgive the whole thing? Like genuinely, genuinely, not to, not to cover it up. Can you genuinely reach such a profoundly courageous, brave, level of yourself, of your own willingness to know that you do not know, that although you might be right from many points of views, it still does not come close to the infinite mystery, which is the truth of God. So you might be right, but you're pinching yourself off from truth in the process of being right. So yes, it's valid. You're right. This person did that to you, or they didn't do that to you when they said they would. And you have all the rights to communicate that. And that can't even be a beautiful reflection for them that they need to hear. So don't shy away from your human relational honor and integrity and communication skills. But behind that, for your own sake, let God's love shine through and let it reveal that nothing really major is going on here in terms of your relationships and your ideas and your conflicts. Let yourself attain, transcend to a deeper domain of forgiveness where you don't hold on to what they did or didn't do. You might still communicate it because you see it's off and it's good to correct behavior. It's good to reflect that in a loving way, sometimes for yourself or your own ease and sometimes purely out of service to others. You can take on that role of, hey, even though you feel already completely forgiven and loved, you can still take on the role of saying, hey, this isn't cool. I don't think this is the highest integrity. I don't, this, I don't think this is serving that being by behaving in this way and not getting it reflected. So I'm going to reflect this to them as a person so that they can learn and they can get more into alignment with themselves if they so choose to use that feedback. However, again, on a deeper level, can you forgive yourself for holding the grudge perhaps? And can you forgive others in your life? Completely, completely off the hook. Let them off the hook. Let them off the hook. You know how much it weighs to carry all these people behind you on hooks? chains and hooks. If you let them off the hook, oh, it's so good.